Hi friends, it's Rev Janet Jones from High Country United Church up in Camilla, Ontario, here with you in the worship studio in Orangeville. And thank you so much for joining us this evening or whenever you're watching it. Um, we're going to dive right into prayers and we'll have our announcements after. Uh, again, this is our, well, again, like I told you already, right? Not today anyway. This is our last uh, kind of a Sunday off. And so... Uh, just we're keeping prayers vague and we'll get together next week and we'll um, put names back in our prayers. But friends, there will be an opportunity to share your prayers uh, in the silence of your hearts at home. If you have a prayer request uh, you would like us to uh, publicly name or if you'd like me to just keep a person or something in my personal prayers with you, uh, just send a message. Just say, can you keep it private or not? And then I know where to put it. Okay. All right, friends, let's dive right in. Uh, first, we're going to light our candle. It's great. It's great. I'm going to remember what to do and how to do it. We're going to, I almost did not light the candle. not going to lie. All right. We light our candle in solidarity with our brothers and sisters around the world. And as a sign of hope for each and every one of us. All right, so our scripture today is from Matthew 16, verses 21 to 28. So let's, let's listen into these words. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who will lose their life, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste the death, will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. I was watching, what is it that we're watching? Um, I know what it is. It's like the Seattle 911, but it's like the fire one. And I, I'll, any other time I could name it, and I can't. But so I'm kind of watching it, and there was a most interesting line in the script and they were talking so the where I am in binge watching it is kind of in COVID but also the Black Lives Matter uh, I want to say phase but start off anyway that part of our world and uh, one of the fe fellow firefighters um, he said something, I wish I had it word for word, but it was more of the line of, there, it's one thing to ask for change in systemic uh, problems, right? So we can demand and all this, but it's another thing to act. So it's another, it's one thing to say and request, it's another to call people into account. And I thought, this is really interesting. And then when I read the scripture today, I was like, hmm, so what does this all mean? Like people kind of get in our way sometimes of the things um, that need to happen in our world. Or the things we think need to happen, which is also very dangerous. But some of the changes, again, like the metro workers asking for more of a living wage, share the profit um, with the employees who are doing the work, you know, um, and all this other thing. Like I keep thinking of all the essential workers that worked through COVID and worked through so many things and so many who didn't. And it's like, how, how... How have we not changed anything? 
after that enlightenment in our world. I think some of us are like, absolutely, they need to be paid more. But how do we actually do it? How do we call people into account? How do we create new standards? Um, and how, how do we, maybe even as employers, how do we make things happen without feeling like you're taken advantage of or losing your profit margin because you also do so many other good things in the world? I don't know if I have an answer to it, but I just thought it was really interesting, that idea of like Peter asking Jesus, forbid it, forbid it, Lord, you shall not go and get tortured and killed and yet Jesus knew some hardships have to happen in, th- in order for things to change. And nobody usually likes it. Nobody usually <laughs> likes it. I think of the many churches that had have had to close because um, they just couldn't keep their doors open. And uh, some organizations and some businesses that just sometimes it's like, okay, well, we have to close. There's no other option. But then opportunities arise and it's whether we see the opportunity and grab onto it and take it for the ride or if we just let the opportunity surpass us going yeah well I guess that's gonna happen there's a lot this week that I thought about in this scripture (laughs) so it's just a, a lot for me to take in and so I don't know what you're thinking but if it's a lot for you to take in then I feel good and if not then I've not done my job <laughs> but so for every every hardship that falls upon us where is the opportunity and where's the hope what's the thing we can do to make some change can we do that well I don't know but I think it's a great thing to talk about, especially if you are um, kind of like me, wanting to see a change for homelessness and poverty and food banks. Why are we, why are there food banks? Because there's not enough money. Where's the money? (laughs) Where is the sharing? Anyway, a uh, lot of things. I'm just going to leave it. There is no end for you. There's no closure. I just want to put it out there, see what the world says, and I'd love a conversation. All right, friends, we are going to do our take, oh, take me as I am. Here we go. I can do this. I know how to use our system. All right. <laughs> All right. Sing it through twice. I think this this is likely our last Sunday singing this one, but it might be one more Sunday. We'll see how the week unfolds. All right, here we go. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. interesting ending there wasn't it uh, okay so I've seen a few things on the news but I'm not watching the news so I might be muddled in my brain so we're thinking of course of our friend Nancy Avison, still in the hospital uh, we're thinking of our friends uh, who have been volunteering and taking part in the Orangeville Fall Fair and all the cleanup that comes in the next couple of days. And so if you have any time to spare, be in touch with somebody. They might be able to use some help. They really might. Um, Okay, and who else are we thinking of? Still thinking of the devastation in Maui. Um, there There was a huge building fire, and I can't remember what country that was in. Um, there's a lot. So natural disasters will kind of take hold in there. 
Of course, there's violence everywhere and the long weekend, just everyone traveling. So let's hope that I remember. But if not, that was my mini preface prayer. Okay, God, from my mouth to your ears. Okay, friends, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you great thanks for summer. For a little flexibility in our days, perhaps for sunshine and rain, for fall fairs and events and family, friends, and so much more. God, as we think about our world today, we pray for our world and all who are experiencing or recovering from um, natural disasters. Our friends in Maui, our friends in Florida, and so much more. We think of all those who have experienced fires in their homes or in their communities. And God, we pray that we as active living creatures in our world will go and test our smoke detectors and make sure everything is working so we can prevent tragedy for our own loved ones. We pray for our friend Nancy, oh God, who is still in hospital and give thanks for all the updates for the love and support that she has surrounding her. We pray for our church family, oh God, who is likely looking back to getting back to church next week. And so God, just be with all of us as we resume some schedules. But we also ask you to be with all those who are preparing and taking part in the international plowing match that will be happening later on this month and just continue to be with them in the busyness and in the organizing of that. For our friends, O oh God, who are sick. For our friends, O oh God, who are dying. For our friends, O oh God, who are expecting or anticipating a wedding. For our friends going back to school, new jobs, life changes, I ask you to be with us all in whatever we need. In the silence of our prayers, we give to you other things that we're thinking of this night. God, I ask you to be with us all, and especially our friend Cassandra, who celebrated a birthday this week. We just pray that everyone is safe and healthy and well, surrounded by love and joy. And just as we get through this Labor Day weekend, keep us safe on the roads as we travel. Help us to get a little more organized, slowly <laughs> getting there in this room. And help us just to be very mindful that you need us as much as we need you. And to live our lives with intention and grace, justice and mercy and compassion. But may we do so with an abundance of joy, sharing love in this world. We pray this together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It was fall fair weekend. Cows, horses, it just seemed kind of fitting. <laughs> Um, what do you need to know? Oh my gosh, there's so much happening soon. So um, if you have cleaned out your closets and you have your clothing and stuff for the rummage sale, just hold on to it and we'll put out an announcement on when you can bring it up to the church. Um, sure, we can do that soon, sure. But I don't want to make that assumption. I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, I, I still have to do mine. <laughs> I haven't gotten that far. Um, so yeah, the rummage sale will be on the 16th and the 23rd. Um, next Sunday, we're back in church service. I uh, just need this. So there will be, there might be some exercises on Tuesday uh, and Friday. I think we'll do those regular routines um, just to get me back in routine. And then we'll, we'll kind of get back into regular routine as well for the bigger part. Don't forget if you want to come to the heart to home meal presentation on the last Friday of this month or not. Yes, we're in September now um, to contact the church and let us know so we can put your name on the list. It's free. You get to do some taste testing of some of the meals. You get to learn a bit more. Uh, I've tried some. Love it. I think it's reasonably priced. So uh, whatever, you know, <laughs> if you have any, if you have any questions, you can ask. Also, we have our uh, Mary McKean coming and talking to us about finances and taxes uh, on the last Monday of the month. So if you're interested in that, uh, again, contact the church. And these are open to all and it's free and there's lunch on both of them. Oh, can't go wrong. Two lunches one week. It's going to be busy. Um, so we got that. That apple pie day is coming up. So if you know you're going to order apple pies and or meat pies, uh, let us you know, just kind of let your person know or if you don't have a person you can just email the church and say I'm interested in learning more about Pi Day or if you already know all the information then you can just send an order and we'll confirm that with you. <sighs> yeah so welcome back is this coming Sunday so I hope you're all gonna come I would love to see so many people I want to see the church filled so badly just because I miss y'all so much um, and then the following week is uh, old country church so we're gonna sing some older country or country church songs and then we have at the end of the month our annual pet blessing service and it'll be held in the barn so animals of all sorts are, are invited it if you bring a snake I might get really anxious and just bless from afar I'm it's a phobia of mine so I used to be okay with snakes and then I'm not I'm not and please no spiders but if you if you need to I mean I whew, just thinking about them anyway you, you do you and we're gonna bless them and it's gonna be great uh normally we just have cats and dogs so I think we had I think we had a couple rats last year maybe some guinea pigs or maybe they were hamsters I don't know anyway it's good it's a good time it's very informal service it doesn't last too too long because animals all together in the barn can be different um and that, yeah that's all you need to know about that so i'm just gonna leave that there i'll be in the office tuesday at 9 30 ish so if you want to pop in you can we'll be likely knitting downstairs from 10 to 11 our exercise from 11 to 12 and for those who want to go for a walk um, they'll do that at noon if the weather is good all right I'm gonna leave that there for now this is Rev Jan as always saying friends God is with us we are not alone thanks be to God and we're almost back to church I missed you all so much okay take care talk to you soon have a good one <laughs>